Who can summarize what we did yesterday? So I should summarize it. Can you summarize it? Ah, okay, you are in here. By the way, what is it? Data. <laughs> yes, and the guess will work 33%. <laughs> so the rest of the system is working. That will mean the two words. Data constructing language. Data constructing language. That's this is this is what happened. No, if I write that, you have gotten 100, 100. I said you get, you have gotten 60. Data, oh. yes, control. Data control language. And then the definition, what does it do? Data definition language. What is it about? 
can help us? If you say data definition language. Sala. Is it? Just keep my mind. Yes, keep your mind or just keep my mind when you ask. Okay. I won't do my question. <laughs> Affect the Excel. 
is the information in the Excel that is affected. So that makes it a data definition. But if it affects the Excel sheet, then it's data definition, right? If it's the information, then manipulation. That means I'm manipulating the data. So yesterday we did, we use a lot of the words. We use a lot of them, then we group them by what they do. For example, if I For your database, for you to be able to put information in your database, you create a table first, right? That means you have to create a structure first. So that makes it definition. You have to define your structure first. Are, are we okay? So if I say I'm creating table, then Things goes in there. The word I use here, I'm now creating the structure of the table so that I'll put information in it. So that means the word create is a data definition language. Right? Are we okay? I'm now creating the table so that I'll put information in it. So that means the word create is a data definition language. If I create it and I want to delete a column from it, not the data in it, a column, then I will use the word drop. That changes, let's say here was name, age, gender, and then let's see a uh, ID to match our sheet. If I say drop gender, gender is gone. That has affected my structure. Are we okay? So in that case, drop becomes a data definition language. But if I use delete, Delete is not deleting like the structure of the table. It's deleting information from the table. In that case, delete becomes data manipulation language. So if you see one of these words, you just have to figure out what it does. Then you ask yourself, is it affecting the structure? Or I'm just manipulating the information. Take note, if you delete, doesn't mean you're affecting the structure right if you delete it's content you have delete from your table the table structure is still there the number of columns is still intact the table name is still intact if you update a data in it let's say someone's age or name you've changed it from um ali to aliwa in that case the information in it is what you have changed your table you've not changed if it's VACA 30, it's still VACA 30. Please, are we okay with that? The last one is the, the control, and that is used for access. And there are words like grant. For example, if you have a database and you want to say this user, you can only see table A or table B. There are words you will use. Or you, you can, for example, you, you create an account for someone in your database. The person is fired or like the person stops work. You have to revoke it, the person's assets. So there is a word like revoke. That one too is controlling. So it's called data control language. So these are the three categories of words you'll be using with, um, in SQL Server. Or like in SQL, not the server alone, anywhere in SQL.
This is a language, it's a programming language, and the words are grouped into that three we are discussing here. The data definition language, data manipulation language, and the data control language. Are, are we okay? So that is that is it. Then from there we use a lot, we use delete in no particular order. And then um, insert, we use insert, we use create, we use um, update, add, um, a couple of them. Then from there, edit. No, there was no edit. Since, since there is add, update, edit is this. Update, that is the work of edit. So then from there, we went to I wanted to type marriage relationship we went to relationship and then we realized there are three of them one to one we call it one one to one uh, one to many many to many now if I have this table let's say I have table um, person the person has a name age right then I have another table called like a uh, profession and then um, name of profession these are the two let's see excel sheets so everybody here his profession is here there is you are here you don't have two professions you only have one profession you get it anybody here have only one but can one person have two professions you get it so you are looking at scenarios where you are restricted you can only have one you get it then in that case is one to one relation that means this table person and this table they have one to one relationship and I said you really have to struggle to get an example of in, in design you hardly come across things like that if you see a scenario is one to one it's easy to merge them this one can just come here as another column that's all and you don't need another table again like creating an excel sheet the sheet one uh, excel sheet one has name age or like name course then sheet two will be a uh, profession least I have this Let's see ID, name, age, and then um, we have one, two, three, four, five, and then um, let's see, I'm a one, I'm a two, so we we'll have up to I'm a five, and then let's see, um, let's I have this sheet, then I go and create another sheet here, and then see. ID and then um, course or like project let's say the project the person is doing then who is the first person Ama his ID is one then I will say he's doing e-commerce is it commerce then who is the second person Ama two and then he is doing um, let's say X the third person is doing Y. You see, this is one to one relation. In this sheet, Ama one has only one project he's working on. So this is one to one relation. And in database design, when you meet thing like this, then just join the two sheets. Just copy this one. And bring it here. Why? 
just something like this instead of you creating two sheets you just join them so that is one to one so practically you will have less use for one to one but you will have a lot of use for one to many and if you say one to many that means like parent can have many children so you have a parent table children table that parent can have many children so you see one to many you, you get it or a student one student can have many courses is offering this same project can also be restructured to one to many one person can have a lot of projects in that case here you still can have a id one again and then maybe he's working on um let's say iot or whatever so one has appeared many times but it's just that same person so this is also a scenario of one to many and this is what mostly you will find there was another one um, many to many that too um, it doesn't have much practical use but it's a situation that exists you will find a data that is kind of many to many um, I think I struggle to get an example. What was the example I got? Yes. What you hear say? No. Then you have no clue. <laughs> um, is it course and student? Um, Let's say we have um, lecturer can be teaching many students. Yeah, lecturer student can be many to many. Lecturer can teach many students, and you can have many students today have one lecturer. Is it? One many to many is actually if you have to work with it, you will split it into two many to many. A two one to many. Two one to many. Yeah, if you have to work with many to many. It's kind of one to a many, one to many, then they join. Like to get many to get many to many. So every many, many to many, many you can that picture that one to many in it. Yeah, you can picture that one to many in it. So that was it for joins. The most practical one you'll be using mostly will be the one to many. And in your design, when you see a situation there is many to many, you have to split them into individual one to many. And there are ways around that that you have to do. It's called joint table. We introduce a force table into it. Then we landed on the assignment. So what is inner joint? The assignment is by virtue of the fact that you have fed these guys were in here and I know they didn't ask what did the class learn they didn't so I'm just coming to you straight the only disadvantage is you can't Google you are the first <laughs> so, so just sacrifice <laughs> 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 is it? I said he is a scapegoat. Yes. <laughs> yes. I gave it as assignment that uh, left joint, right joint, and the inner joint. As your programmer, <laughs> what did you learn about join? <laughs> your page is no loading there. <laughs> what is it? Uh, the inner, the mm. Like, we have two different tables. Okay. So we want to add a to uh, another table. That's uh, the user can be the 
quality in that I want it to appear in my business. I have used the brand bring that table. Yes, we have um let's say table A, table B. We want to get information from here, information from here. Then say we we'll use join. And then I say there is an assignment. There are three types, so go and find them. Oh. So what well, what which one you do find? Yes, they are told the same thing. No, it came before the wasalam. Yeah, the assignment came before the wasalam. Bansura. Uh, what have you read right now? Okay. It combines rules from two or more tables. Okay. And what about the left join? Hmm? It's still loading. It's still loading. Okay, okay. Fuck, what did you learn about join? The left, the right. Oh, your, your page is loaded. <laughs> it's <big. laughs> Let's see something. Accountant, then I'm giving you that. 
<laughs> accountant, then you will be this. Right? <laughs> Country, Ghana. Remember the Ghana, this guy, he wrote GH. Yes. This guy is writing Ghana in full. The accountant, he wrote in full. He's writing this. Female, this. Another person can decide to write F. Right? So, your data becomes a wavy. Like, there's no format in it. So, if you have that data and they ask for the data you have, how many females are in it? It's difficult to get it. How many accountants are in it? How many of your workers are on Nigeria level? Things like that, you can't answer. Because it's difficult to, to handle such data. So what happens is, to prevent different spelling, right? This one, instead of making it open, you make it something that they can select from. Are we okay? So that they click here, the professions will come down, then they'll just select. They can't type. The country the same way. You will not make it open. You will search for the countries, put it in your database, then you bring it here so that they can select instead of them entering. So in that case, the data coming, they are all the same format. Gender the same. You take gender out, then they will select gender. Or you can make it M and then F then the person will take one or it will be round then the person will click one or click this in that case you limit them they will not be able to type what they want to represent them that the same happens to title title someone can write mister someone can write mister different different spelling and if you are like me it's even possible that mister you, you write it wrongly different possibilities. So what you would do is, this one, you do the same thing to it. You make it this way, so that the people will, they will select. Now, that data you look through, and then you realize, no, this can bring data entry problems. This can bring data, inter, uh, data entry problems. All those ones, this one, this one, this one, this one and this. They are all tables now. So you will have a country table. You will have a profession table. You will have a title. Ideally, you should have gender. But I said you shouldn't create for gender. For the reason that it's just two, it's not many. So in our HTML form, we can just bring that option there. Still, the person will not be able to type the gender, but it's not coming from data because you're showing to him. It's coming from just your HTML form. Are you okay? So, now, <coughs> instead of one table, you now have one, two, three. One, two, three. And then the main one that will remain. This will go out. So when you have split your tables into four, how do you join them again to get all the information you want? Right? How do you join the link all the tables again to get the information you want? That was where we got to, that was where the join came in. Are we okay? So straight away, let's let's borrow two tables. To explain those three types of joints. There are some other complex words like uh, left outer joint, uh, right outer, what, what, what. But what you have to focus on is left joint, right joint, and then inner joint. Now, let's call this. 
Napo table. And then let's call this GS table. Now, let's say Napo came right and I applied. Let's say ID, name, age, and then um, course. This one, so first person, second, third, fourth, fifth. Please, let's, let's follow this. If you mix it, we split our team, we will be problematic. Let's get this concept. So, um, let's say Ali, Abu, Ama, um, Bintu, Muna, right? And the ages, uh, of course, the question. So let me see. Um, Bintu one. They can communicate to us if there is no telephone number. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's add a telephone number to it. Your course is um, in no reference. This is a grade. This is um, political science. Um, nice easy. What should we add? Education. 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 Okay. <laughs> and the dawn. So, um, <laughs> telephone number is this is one 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 two three 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 Let's say six, yes, twenty-seven. I'll pick the one, and then six, six. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how. That's how. That's how. That's how. That's how. That's how. I was fast, so I wrote first. I applied first. The second one? No one. Yes. You want me to go to say this is again? <laughs> then this one is, let's see, age. Then, um, what is it? Course. They also need telephone. <coughs> Maybe they need um, <coughs> email. And they are, oh, they have that guy. They normally have the guitar address. For two years, they don't care. So let's say, I want to get columns that are different. So the guitar address. Address x x x y y y So let's say that is and then A is one, course is done, telephone is uh, one one one. No, this if you don't maintain it, you will have problem. I can't change my telephone number. And then he is, let's say, and whatever. The second person is, um, let's say Ali also applied. His age is 21. My age is 27. His age is 
If you want to know those who were picked at both sides, then you add your pair condition and other things. But we just want to know those here and those here. Now, if you want to know those who are here, but they didn't apply here, then you want to give them priority. They applied here, they didn't apply here. They are on the left side, right? So in that case, you will use left to join. You want to know those who apply here, but didn't apply here, then you need right join. 
Those are the three types of joints we have. Inner joint, left joint, and then right joint. The information you want to pick. Who is not there? So let's create these two tables and apply the joints and see. Let's create them like in that table. Come again. Yes, you can apply it there, but let's do this. So that we get a space of equation. And then we enter this and then we get a space of the joints. So we are creating Yes, let's create this two tables. The NAPO table and then the Or if you want to test, you can create a new database. You see, if you still remember that story, you create a new database. Remember, place schema. So you can say place schema, maybe like employment or place schema or like job. Mm -hmm. uh, job, what, what? Let's create a new schema and call it job applicant. So that we have consistency. Let's create a new schema and call it job applicants. And remember, when you create it, you have to make it the default. If you know the tables you will create, you will not go under that uh, schema you created. Because for now, maybe it doesn't go have any the default. So when you create a new database or a schema called a job applicant, you make it a default. If you don't make it a default, tables you create and you all go under that. And now here, who can tell us what a primary key will be for this table and then for this table? You know what primary key is? Let's 
So this one, we know what the dead life is. The dead life for this, right? To be integer and to be photo increments. This one we know vaca. This we know is integer vaca. This can be car or vaca. Uh, this vaca. This can be integer. One or like two fours. Four boolean. The zero side four boolean. You can use that. So let's let's build the database. Let's build the two tables. Let's build the relationship. And then let's put data and let's query. Are you going to use it for? Yes. So then, uh, is it coming from this or data? It doesn't matter. Yes, it also has the features. Yeah, if it is you. <coughs> it, you decide. You decide. But the thing is, um, yes, ID qualifies as primary key. Telephone qualifies as primary key. And then email also qualifies as primary key. So you, you decide. Which one do you have to vote? By the time you are put in your mind to. But me personally, I will use um, telephone number. Right? The, the reason is let's say if I come here and I see telephone number, you know, aside being a unique, it carries information. You get it? It carries information. So, if I'm working in this table and I see telephone number, then I can directly say that the same person if I call. If I'm working here and I have to call someone, you get it? The telephone number here, I know that the same person here. So, this is a primary key, all right, but it doesn't, um, there is this. Um, like syntax and semantics. You know, it has meaning. Telephone number. Mm -hmm. Aside being a number, it's something you can use to call someone. And okay, so on that basis, I'll pick that one. And I'm yeah, the number. Mm -hmm. And I'm not picking the email because it's vaca. The variations in it. If you see where telephone number is this, it's Find me in programming that me say where email is, then I'll be typing that email at what, 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 and then dot com or dot. Uh -huh. So for the first side, I will not pick the email, though it also qualifies. I'll pick the number. Why are you not picking the number? Yes, if you take this one. This qualifies as um, um, primary key. This qualifies as primary key. This qualifies as primary key. This is easier to use. But I said I'll pick telephone number. Because if I come here, the telephone number here, look, I knew there is this possibility. This ID might not be the same as this ID. That is also another even angle we have to look at. Because the first person to register here might not be the first person to register here. I think that nullifies that. But in case they are even the same, then we can still continue the installation. Then I'm picking this for a reason that it has meaning. This number doesn't have meaning. This is a number, but it has meaning. It's a number you can use to communicate. Telephone number. That's why he asks of my preference. So why you will settle on is why you for example the if you take um the data I've been working on, this is there's a staff ID. Mm -hmm. But the table also can have his IDs. But I use staff ID for relationships. So in whichever 
um, you're going to have to search for star. I don't need these numbers. And so whichever table I am, if I have to search, then I'll just use the staff number. And so the table has the ID back. I'm using the staff number as primary keys. And then foreign keys and other keys. So, so I'll use Yeah, you still maintain it. Maintain it as well. Like the staff number I mentioned, they are they are set machines. They are numbers, but I'm teaching them as Baka. Well. Yeah, I'm teaching them as Baka. Well. Yeah. And sometimes you do it with this condition that somebody can come and say, okay. Begin it with zero. Or, uh, so in that case, it's already back. Uh, but if it's empty, I have to change it. If not, um, for example, if it was integer, it can't handle pension rates. Pension begins with P. You normally add P to their numbers. Uh, so it's just a room I created that uh, anything at all can fit here. Come again. If this ID was to be a national. Yeah, I would yeah, I would have used it as a as a problem. And you remember I also made mention of one thing. When picking the ID, you also have to consider if external laws don't have effect on it. Uh, so like my data, for example, there are relational IDs we need, but the school has its own ID. It's not relying on this uh, ID uh, because national law can come and say we are even using this ID again. Uh, so that's why institutions create their own IDs that you can just find them go away. Once you know this is unique, it can be now, then you know it qualifies. The rest is mostly laws, like rules, conditions you have to follow and then decide which one to use. What matters is it qualifies. <coughs> After telephone number, here, the address, the address, this is status, this is email. Yes. Um, Okay. Yeah, can you still make it a photo implement or the size of the number? Make your telephone number the number. Why did I say you should make it? You mm -hmm. said the ID is like setting the template. Mm -hmm. That one, you can decide to tell you the ID is the telephone yeah. number. And I want to know if you set the telephone number or email as your primary key. Can you make, make the ID that is one of the that is that put you into me so that the system will be made there? Yeah, I've said that. I said that you should make this one auto increment. Yes. You should make this one integer and we make it auto increment. So that will be integer auto increment. We don't have to waste time entering number one, number two. Allow the system to do that for you. But if you want some special numbers, then you can't make it that good. Okay.
claiming have this. Right? This can have a parameter. We have a data, it's in Excel. Which of the columns mm -hmm. that I one person can only have one. Two people cannot have uh, that the ID or telephone or email. Because all these these three items, they are one one, they are unique. Three of them. Then you say, okay, I want to pick this. One one of those unique is why you have to pick and link to other team. One of those three, those three are unique. That's so why you have to pick and then link to, you have to link to other things you have. Mm -hmm. The one you decide to pick, that one is now called the primary key. The two you didn't, you will call the key keys. Okay. So the one you will pick, if you put in another table, that one is now a foreign one. So it's, it's in someone's land now. You get it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh -huh. This one can have his primary key, this can have his primary key, and there's no relation between them. Yeah. But if you look through, you can't find anything that makes them unique. Anything that makes them unique. Then straight away, you will have to add one. What well, we said yesterday is a must. Everything you should have a column. That's about Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think there is not there. The columns are not the same. Yeah. It can. It can vary. It can vary. Yesterday school, I put some samples as lab, so we can reference it to see how pretty it is, or like the joints and other things. How do how do you like it? <laughs> Never seen it before. How how is it? How, how is it? It begins with the region of the So characters come, then dash, then some,
You might have done with yours. Yeah. Okay, they say machine. No, no, no. It's good. Okay. But I always do it.
is a problem, I don't care. Problem in the pen drive. Is it the pen drive? Don't mind them. Uh, oh, that's why. This one, this one, this one. These are the latest ones. Wait, this. I think this. This is one of them. This is one. What is the two? It's a bit design. This is it. We've got a train we've done so far. Each. This it also include the this video and the and the web page. Uh, it's consuming. Uh, Are we halfway? It's already five. Mm -hmm. Why did they get error? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if it was <laughs> like if you insert, but it's, it says successful or. Look at the data. Are you getting both those here and here? When you use the inner join, okay. If you said to it, okay, 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 and make sure some records are common to them so that we can get those here. And some records are here but not here. My status is either zero or one. When you apply, where you pick, yes means one, no means zero. No, no, you are doing based on the relationship you built, that column, and that column to duplicate. You should be here, you should be here. So that the inner drawing will work. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, different ID because it's not that's not the primary key. But the one I want to use for relationship, if here is the telephone number, if you say this is yes, you should say this is. Yes, that's what I said. I should use telephone number as primary key. apply for GES. Were you picked? Yes. One means yes. The person was picked. Zero means the person was Eight. Let's let be fast and go home more. If you sit home and test, okay, then you use that voice to bring that phone. Yeah, it's like the phone is here. Yeah, just come. Yeah. That is why it's difficult to do attendance system without biometric. If anybody will sit anywhere and log in, they have come. So that's why the person has to come to this person. If not, you can just do biometric assist Google software. If you come, you log in. That's all. But somebody will tell somebody his password when you go log in for it. So you have to get that device when you come personally. If, if if you can get an answer to that, you get money. What what do you need to request for the person so that the person can just come and log in himself? He will not. He will see it too dangerous to share his password. What? Yeah, it still goes under biometric, so you have to get the device. Yeah, but this one, you just want like software, like how Windows is. You just sit. What will you need to do to make sure the person himself will come without using biometric? Like your assistant doesn't use fingerprint, your assistant doesn't scan. What do you need to, to use so that the person himself will come? He will never say no. I can give to someone. You know, using my password, he will just give it to this person, and the person will go and log in. This he doesn't even come to work. He can still give it to someone. Mm. So, uh -huh. so what? What do you think? Today I, what well, last night a thought just came to my mind. Okay, instead of just username and password, let's ask some questions 
maybe the person will not like to share his answer. Yeah. That came to my mind. Yeah. And the first thing that came to my mind was uh, actually, I've, of course, I was looking at Peg. Yeah. Yeah, coming to log in to ask you uh, what's your basic salary. It's, a, it's something people don't want to share. <laughs> uh, so the system will have their basic salaries already. So one of the questions would be, what is your basic salary? Uh, it's something people don't want to, don't want to share. <laughs> uh, so, and, but there's another thing. Once someone knows this is your certificate, those things are against. For now, what we are focusing on is who applied here and applied here? Who applied here and didn't apply here? Or who applied there and didn't apply here? Whether he was picked or not. We just want to see the applicant. ideas you can sit and think. Uh, it doesn't mean like the one who develops it has to get that answer. But once you get the answer for him, he can implement it. Uh, but if you can program it, that means you have the best sense. Uh, so if you can really get something that you ask the person and the person will know more. Yes. It just has to be a question, the person knows the answer, and that answer, he doesn't want to share it with yeah. anyone. Yeah, that is what you want. Yeah. What question will you ask the person? It will be his personal answer. He knows the answer, but he doesn't want to share the answer with anyone. Yeah. Ideally, that is how password should have been, but people share it. Yeah. But there are things, no matter what you do, for example, if you are to reset I think Yahoo password or Google iCloud, they ask questions like, uh, for example, <coughs> who was your first girlfriend? It's a question they can ask. When did, where did you have your first date? Okay, but, this one, somebody will share with a close friend, but it's not something you will call anybody and then you say, there is this question, the answer is this date, this date, or who, who is the first person you dated? 
<laughs> All right, so crazy questions like that. If you can really get the one hundred percent, this one the person will never share. For example, um, what's your credit card number? But that one is not safe. Yeah, it's not safe to be captured because uh, the number is that way. So you just need something answers like that. How far would you go? What are you trying to do? I said, Were you not here? Go and bring your machine. Are it's working now. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> but some, some portion has worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, make sure there is common data so that when you use it in a you will see that record at least one or two should be here and should be here also so which, which one are you doing now? So this one is for <laughs> 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 no, yeah. I I said you should get the new database. Wow. So this and then call it job applicant. <laughs> so GES is done. So if you are creating this one is database name ah, okay. and then inside the database there is one table called okay. NAPCO there is another table called GES mm -hmm. <laughs> So here, yeah, which one is the primary key? Have you said the primary key? This one is the primary key. That's for the GES table. And the NAPO, which one is the primary key? The NAPO. Uh -huh. So that means either this one will come into this, or the GES ID will come into this. That's your problem relationship. You see? You now have a two tables. So when, when when that is done, that is where you can find the GS ID inside. Yes, you have to add it to that. So if I can, yeah. Let's do it here. But I will not share the book so that you continue from home. <coughs> let's let's do this in ten minutes and continue from home. We are doing it, but I will not share the code. Is it? Yes, it's on it.
Yes, I'll not share the code. I have to take screenshots if you know where well. your phone will crash. <coughs> hmm? Right now. So I'm connecting to my database, I'm entering the password, the C is wrong, I'm entering again. Okay, this is the USB to a First, um, what do we do first? What do we do first? Baki, what do we do first? We create the table. So we create the database first. So create a schema. And I'll say we should call the job applicant. Right? I'm calling a job applicant. It's created, right? I'm done with that. So I'm going to make it default. So if I come here, if you refresh, you will see that too. That's it here. So I'll just right click and then um, make screenshots. Um, and then. <laughs> <laughs> so let's create let's create the the first table that is the GES right NAPCO so tab, create table uh, NAPCO and you will have this uh, let me see NAPCO ID which is int primary key auto auto increment that's it. I'm done with the first one. Then the name. I'm not splitting. So um, name that will be Varka. Then we have 64. Gender, right? Gender will be car one. And then what is it? Age. Age is int. Um, mobile. Yeah, telephone. This, well, I'll make it car 10. And then um, email will be back, uh, and then let's say um, 32. Um, I think um, this, is, this is fine. Well, status, right? Status, I'm making it int. And that's all. That's all. This is the one. Um, this will be auto. So if you are making this one, I said we should make this one primary key. Right? So if you are making this one, it gives an error. That once you are making this one an auto, that should be the primary key. Right, uh -huh. and that was the error, and I wonder how people didn't get it. You got that error. <laughs> we made this one. Okay, by initial I said we should make the this one, the mover, the mover, the this one. So for that error sake, I'm telling this one because I want to use the mover as the primary key. So that's it. We have an error. Uh, this is not supposed to be there. That is it. I'm done creating this. So create table GS. And then um, let me see GS ID, which will be in primary key and then auto increment. Then we have um, that we have name there too, which is 32. We have age there, which is int. We have gender there, which is car. Um, mobile. So mobile is coming, which is 
card and then we have email which is um vaca let's say 32 statues which is um in you can add any other color you want let's say um district which is vaca and then we have 32 so that is it but let's say this one is um is in the it's coming from napco right we are assuming this is coming from napco so this will be a foreign key so um references um napco mobile this is it we are building that link to napco we are doing it this way because we are creating a relationship at the time when we are creating the table. If like we create it this way, let's say it's created. Now I want to build a relationship. Then that, that's why I'll go to author table and then um, GES um, add constraint. I'm calling that one um is it Napo key. So um, is um, foreign right foreign key um, references is, um, it's this one this one can be anything it's a name we are using to call what we are doing. So it's referencing NAPCO. This one there has to be the proper one. Um, add constraint. How did we do it yesterday? Add constraint FF foreign key mover or <coughs> that is no why it's not valid. Let's see our code we did yesterday. Do you have anything for? Yeah. Our yeah. table. Yeah, this is it. Add FF. Okay, okay. It's, it should be in brackets. This should be in brackets. This is it. So. That's it. We've created the relationship between the two tables. So we can insert data into each. That's all. And when we are done, um, insert data, let's say insert into NAPCO. We know how to do this. Then we will insert into GES. And then when we are done, we say select all from NAPCO inner join. GES on napco dot mobile is called to GES dot mobile. That's all for the inner join. And for the left join, here will be left. For the right join, here will be right. That's all. That is all. Yes. Is that to be the same?
No, I said we don't care whether the person got job or he didn't. What we are focusing on is he applied here, he applied here. It doesn't matter whether the details NAPO requested is the same detail uh, GES requested. What we are interested in is both GES and NAPO requested for a column that is common for those two tables. And that's why we are building the relationship on. So that's all. This one is just insert. So here will be values. And then you list your values there. The code I push on Slack, these, these things are there. If you look at them, you, you'll be able to. So let's go and do it home. Let's try and complete it before tomorrow. Hey, God will in Monday. Hey, then I can add more. <laughs> Is it? Ah, okay. Where is the code for the drain? This is for the. Aha, uh -huh, this is where. This is what I was talking about. <coughs> Here. If I say inner, then I mean I want those who applied at NAPCO and also applied at GES. That is what I'm focusing on. If I want to know who apply at NAPCO, apply here and were picked at NAPCO, that is something extra that will require me to add where. You get it? Where is the NAPCO um, dot status is equal to one or NAPCO dot status is equal to zero, those who were not picked. Or if I want to know the person applied here, he applied here, was he a, a picked at GES? Then in that case, where well, it will be GES dot uh, mobile status. So status is called to one or status is called to zero, whether he was picked or not. But our focus is he applied here and he applied here. And that is what inner join achieves. Now, I want to know who applied here and didn't apply here. Then in that case, here will be left. And it's left because this is what comes first. If I had done this, uh, and then NAPCO here, and I want those who apply at NAPCO and not GES, then this will turn to right, meaning the right side. So I want every all those who apply and didn't apply here. Now if I want those who apply at GES but didn't apply at NAPCO, then here will be left. If I change the locations of the tables and I want the same data, then it will be right. <coughs> On this note, we say what salam. I should slack it. But the insert is not complete. So, but if you look at the one I did, I put there already. You see the complete go for insert. <coughs> Come again. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm doing it. We are having trouble connecting, so we are having. Select that. 
our policy here. Sometimes you do like a guy in kind of traffic. Yeah, I want you to